Hi and welcome back to Stone Ranger. You're joining me in Havisi today, right in the centre of the Peak District. Literally a stone's throw away from my house. Actually, if these trees weren't in the way, you'd be able to see my house. So, what I'm going to try and teach you today is how to build a cheek end. A cheek end's quite a difficult part of a dry stone wall. It's um, on the end where you get where you're swinging a gate. So it's got to be strong, it's got to be freestanding. You've got to make all your, sure all your joints are crossed. You're going to have that cross section as you're going up. You go on that 90 degree as the wall comes back up on itself. Nice and strong. I'll put a little picture on the screen now of how it's meant to look. So this is actually a training wall what we're on. It's um, a training wall what lots of my groups use when they're practicing from level one to level two or even just a crash course couple of days with us at the peak park in my full-time job. So I've got some groups at the minute on here who are going for their level two. Level two you've got to be able to build a cheek end. I think it's five hours you've got to build a cheek end and a couple of meters of dry stone wall and that will get you level two qualified as a dry stone waller. So what I'm going to do I've taken this wall down, this cheek end, what was already here. I've only tapered it back slightly because um, we don't want to be taking it all down, we're just concentrating on the cheek end. And plus there's other, other people's walls all the way along. I put some stone to one side, what we're going to uh, use to build the wall. I'm going to put my gloves on and we'll get seeing if we can build a little bit. I'll stop along the way, um, do a little talk about what you might need to know. But hopefully you'll be able to see most of what you need from the video. Right, get the gloves on and we'll get going. I'm hoping you can see what I'm talking about now we've got to this stage. I wanted to build it up a little bit so you could see it. So we've got one length going in this way and then the next one it's going that. So crossing the joints all the time making it really strong on this end. You can only build with the stone you've got. So if you're building a farm wall it only, can only be as neat as your whatever you're getting paid really for how long you can take um, dressing all the stone up and what stone you've got. If you're building a garden wall with different stone and it's better money you can take more time so each individual job you've got to remember that as you're doing it. The lads here haven't done a bad job of sorting the stone out so it's not too bad. We're making a good farm wall cheek end and that's what that's what the aim is with this stone. So I had a guy yesterday um, comment on one of my videos saying he didn't realise how important putting the middle of the wall in all the all the bits in the middle like so all these bits pieces. Some people call it hearting, some people call it middle, some people call it fill. And my answer to him was each part of the wall is as important as each other. If you just take care of each individual part, you'll have a really good strong wall. So your foundation's in, make sure they're strong, uh, make sure they're not wobbling and your biggest one's in first. Then you're moving on to your next course. Big piece of stone packed in. Each time you're building a course up, make sure you're going around with a hammer and putting all your bits of middle in there, making sure it's really tight, really packed, there's no movement. Then your next course, then your through stones, and then once you put your through stones on, build between them, 
tapping the little bits of stone underneath them to make sure they're nice and strong building up all the way till you get to your copers and your copers are on properly all them bits I've just mentioned there there are other videos on my channel if you want to go and watch them you might be able to pick up some little hints and tips if you're new to dry stone walling or if you, even if it's just a refresh and you haven't done it for a while so what I'm going to do now I'm going to um, put the strings up I'm going to go up to my next course I'm going to try and find a, a nice piece of stone that'll span all the way across either on this course or the next course um, and we'll build it up getting up to the top and then we'll get some coping stones on and we'll move on to the next project right let's carry on So that's it, I've got the cheek end all finished, all done now. It's uh, fairly happy with that, for, especially for a field cheek end. I think it's turned out okay, it's quite nice. There's the odd one I change here and there, but there always is, and that's how you improve by seeing where you've made the mistakes so you can get better. It's not always perfect, we're not building with Lego, we are building with random gritstone after all. So hopefully you'll be able to see what I meant about building the water, your returns, and you're crossing your joints all the way up and you're staggering it, you've got that A shape. I've got a few more coping stones to put on, so I'll jump up, jump up and put the rest of them coping stones on, and then I'm going to go back to my workshop. Now the sun's out, it's about two o'clock now, so it's taken what it came about half past nine, so it's not taking too long. I grab myself a coffee on the way back, go back to my workshop and do some more jobs. Um, I hope you've enjoyed that, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>